Ready when you are. Rock and roll right now? Mm-hmm. All righty, welcome. <laughs> is it on? Yeah, it All is, right. but we can start it wherever. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, welcome back. I'm your man, Bad Chad, and Queen Jolene's on the camera today. She's going to... You're on camera. <laughs> yeah. But Queen Jolene's going to help me um, block the hood. On this, on this side, it's already been blocked out. Uh, we can tell it's been blocked out because there's no guide coat on it. On this side, it's got guide coat on it, and she's going to go for it. And I'm going to give her a piece of 80 grit. Actually, I'm going to give her a piece of, I'm not sure what grit this is. It's in the 100s, I know that. 180 maybe. Not sure, 120 I think it is. It's on the long block. Basically, she's just going to rub along there, crisscross that a little bit. And that might be wore out, so I'm going to give her this one too. I'm going to gear her up with some 80 grit. Thanks for coming back, everybody. We appreciate it. Yes, we do. Um, taking your time to come with us and follow this build with us. Uh, Jolene has put the pressure on. Watch her <laughs> smile. <laughs> she did smile. Uh, she's put the pressure on. She's to paint this damn thing. And um, we can get on to something else. Because what, what is going on is it's hard to go over... Uh, and make videos of something that takes a process of sanding um, to watch us just sand. Which basically, that's what's going on. We are sanding our... We haven't been sanding the last couple of days. We've been having a little bit of fun. Um, mm -hmm. we, we're having a little bit of fun, obviously. I'm going to get her to go with the 80 grit first. And the reason being is this primer is so hard that I find that... I, I, I like to do it with an 80 first because you, you, you see progress. If you start blocking with a, a 220 or something like that, or 180, I find it don't. It takes a long time for it to work. Also, that is sharp. That straightens. Um, your 220 and your higher grits um, seem are polishers. They, they polish the primer to smooth. This here will straighten it out. So Jolene's going to do the hood. All she's going to do is hold it flat and go all the way along it. I am not going to give her any direction. Um, she's just going to go for it. I am going to go to the wheel well, or the door on this side. I've got a piece of 80 grit on this. I am going to sand some spots inside the door. And we'll try to keep conversation uh, to keep it... What? Keep the attention, I guess, of the video. So what's going on inside the door here is inside the door has been filled out too, because obviously the whole car has been uh, made or welded, but inside the door, when you open the door, we do not want to see any rough stuff, pinholes, scratches, anything like that. We want it all to be smooth everywhere, so every piece of the car has to be paid attention to. And uh, that's what we're doing right at the present moment. And the whip has been put in place. I was asked this morning, to, she, he said, so she must want to get married, does she? And I said, no, she just wants the car done. <laughs> We can get married anytime, can't we, baby? We can get married anytime. And also, Jolene is um, woman enough to know um, that marriage does not change anything. No. No. We can have a party anytime. Yeah. But she does have a ring on her finger, like Beyonce said. So all this stuff that we're sanding off, like you see filler here, you see metal there, some filler and fiberglass and bare metal, all that stuff has to be primed again. Yes, it does. But we will not hit it with an 80 grit next time. Next time it'll be paint time. Next time will be paint time. And on these doors, I have to be careful. Um, the, the edge where the, where the corner of the door is, the edge here, I'm saying is the opening that I want. Um, if I start knocking that down, when I put my door back on, the door edge is not going to look that good because it's at where it needs to be, and I do not want to change it. I just want to sand it and have no scratches is all I want. I'm get my spectacles on so I can see what I'm doing. How's that going for you over there? I'm just going to come over for a second. Now you can see, look, you can see, obviously, see scratches there, scratches there, scratches everywhere. If you want to grab your camera at any time, you're, you're more than welcome to bring them over to show them exactly what's going on. You can pull a Jimbo, sand and film. 
Jimbo's doing great on the YouTube, must say. Doing awesome. He's an awesome dude. Tell him what you're doing, Jolene. Or so, just so you know, if you if you talk it over in your own head and you and you kind of talk it through, I find that you you learn things better. If you know what I'm trying to say, you can say you can do whatever you want, but if you if you're talking about it, you must know what you're talking about. So anywhere the the black meat is, means. And I'm listening. Well, wherever, <laughs> wherever it's black means the sander isn't hitting it yet. So that would be the low. And trying to scan the whole area to get down to where the side plate is. off on me boys just like that I'm just trying to I can see like I'm sanding it here but I've got an edge right here that is the edge where the door fits the best I'm thinking it is I'm hoping it is and I, I want it to get down to that so the door opening stays at its best you can see the the, the fender skirt gap on this one the fender skirt gap on the other side, I want it to make it look the same. That's the stuff I look for, or stuff you should look for when you're doing your car. And if you can see it, I can see it. We're at the primer this yet, obviously. Yeah. This is the stuff that takes the time. I don't think not the thankless stuff, I guess. filler on something and you're sanding it and you're trying to make it smooth as possible and you're taking it down more <laughs> the more pinholes you find 
then you have to put more on it. I like to try to do the pinholes right after it's primed and that way there you can see them nicely and you only have to do the pinhole. If I start pinholing, what I mean by pinholing, is filling the pinholes after I sand this filler off here, then I'm into my filler again. So I have filler going along here. If I pinhole now, I am going to sand the filler that I got there beside it to get the pinhole. If I prime it and then pinhole it, I'm more than likely able to sand the filler and the primer together, which I will not go back into my filler again. So um, I find it's better to pinhole. What I mean by pinhole is to find the little holes in your filler after you prime. Just yeah, you know, I guess you find out after you do it, you know. You, you can listen to me, you can say it's the wrong way or whatever, but putting filler over top of filler means you're sanding the filler that you already have there. Pinholing after seems to be easier. Easier. The doors are going to have to go back on before it paint gets painted. And I forgot to tell I didn't tell you already, Jolene's got the whip on. <laughs> she hasn't got it strapped to her hip or anything. We leave, leave that in the bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> she hasn't got it strapped to her hip or anything. But. I know what you're thinking, Jolene. <laughs> I'm going to slap him. He keeps it up. <laughs> <laughs> How's the hood going? Good. Takes a while. What's that, sweetheart? Takes a long time. Why, thank you very much <laughs> for recognizing. <laughs> you hear her voice? Takes a long time. I find 220 and 400 is a lot faster for some reason. You mean sanding something down and get ready to paint? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it seems like it really slides off quicker when the body's nice and straight and flat, you mean? Yeah. If you had 220 right now and 400, you wouldn't find it so simple to sand that off. No. I guarantee you. No. But believe me, you know best. Our guest today's video is called Hustle. Yeah. Hustle. Hustle. I have a painted car by Friday. Are you serious? <laughs> I painted by Friday, I just don't know how it's going to look. <laughs> We're thinking we might paint, or I'm thinking, I might paint the car and then um, not put the rivets in it. Paint the car, 
And, it's, and, and if anything looks not right, you know, just put a couple coats on it, paint it, see if it looks good and all that sort of stuff because it is sort of necessary that it looks good. And then put the rivets in it, sand it down with, say, a 400, 600, and then we'll put the rivets in it, epoxy the rivets, and then paint it one more time for good. I'm thinking I might do it that way. I'm not sure. But I'm scared of anything happening when I put the rivets in. If anything, you know, if I just do crack the filler or crack body fill or crack primer or anything after when I go to put the rivets in it because it's quite a bang when you put the rivets in it. You gotta, you'll see, we'll show you. We'll show you. Tape on them on them hinges. Don't want to scratch them. Get. I'm also do the top one, I guess. Yeah. I'm also do the top one too. Painted by Friday, she said. George, good, George Thorgood sings a good song like that, don't he? You don't pay your rent by Friday? <laughs> huh? That's the goal. That's the goal? Are you serious? Mm -hmm. I want to know if you're serious. Yes, I'm serious. Oh, my God. <laughs> Never said a word, did I, boys? I even stopped saying what I was going to say. <laughs> There's a lot of unknowns with the car. And the unknowns is we have not got any, like we have not got the straps for the hood yet. They're ordered. They're, <laughs> they're ordered. We have not got the straps of the hood yet, and I was talking about, you know, I'd like to drill before we paint. She goes, you drilled holes in paint before, so. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see where you're at. Not bad. Scratch is coming out, don't feel anything. Take your long board and go for it for a bit. Stretch her out and see, see if you can get it all come together. Should I get new paper? And we haven't got that new paper, unless we order it. Around this sort of stuff is painstaking. What I mean by that is it's a lot of hard work. Around these hinges. Ouch. spot in between behind the hinge here that needs to be flat and it needs to be smooth like the rest of the car so what I have done or what I did before I had a little tiny piece of metal 
this little thing, this little sucker here had a little piece of metal. Just a, just a piece of 3 16 piece of metal. And then I apply a piece of piece of 80 on it. Stick it to it. And go up behind that hinge. Hey, slid off on me. I don't like when it does that. It is what it is. Hard spot. Separates the men from the boys. That's all that does. And I want to be careful too. I don't want to just jam it in there and start running. I got to crisscross a little bit if I can to make it as flat and smooth as possible. And the rivets are not in the car because I do not want to sand them around them. I already did that once. I took them all out. I actually applied them to the wrong side when I first done it. We were going to make it a right-hand drive car. And uh, we do not live in the UK, so... Or, France. So, what? France. We do not live in France. So we decided to change that part. It was just silly of us, really. Or I think it was. Just because somebody else has their car that way doesn't mean that we have to do our car that way. And you can tell on this car, this car is a lot different. If you're a newcomer, the windshield is... It's got a curve to it. And I don't think any of the other Bugattis have a curved windshield. I don't think. Um, our headlights are different. Um, our headlights look like the one that was built from the Guild. Looks like that one. Mm -hmm. Our headlights are not the same as the car I took. And our car is not the same as the one as the Guild. The one the Guild is a little bit higher in the front, I think. We built this one off of Ralph Lauren's car. But yet we took the headlights off the one that was from the Guild. We took what we like from all of them, really. Yeah. And Jolene was the, the decision maker on that. Ever the same, like every single one that they did was different. So there you go. So as you know, say well, as things aren't in place as the other ones are. Um, no two are the same. She just said. And I think we're on that field. No two are the same. Got that feeling good behind that hinge. That's a, it's a spot right there, Mister. I like this spot better. What's that, sweetheart? Why, You're allowed. It just seems like it's working better. Working better or just taking up, like see what happens is, I find when you do stuff like that, when you're doing that, you run an 80 grit on it, and then you run a different grit on it, then your sandpaper is able to get in them scratches of the 80 get, grit, and it cuts it a little easier. So if you started off with an 80, and then went to a, a 120 like that is, and then you went to a 180, um, it, it does break it down faster, yes it does. Yes, it does. No doubt in my mind. No doubt in my mind. And I probably use the coarser grits because I'm impatient with the filler sometimes. And uh, if you knew me as a person, you would understand. <laughs> I get impatient sometimes. I like things going quick. So 
So where you get, you get a low back in there by the back of the hood. You see all that guide coat? Yeah. So what is that? That is... It's low. Okay, so what's going to happen? You're going to have to keep cruising there Oops, and dig that primer down to make that come down to one playing field. Or you hit metal or whatever's there, mm -hmm. filler, um, to make... You're going, go to the ocean floor if you can, or go yeah. as long as you can. Got ocean floor up the front? No, not yet. Okay, well, you're going to have to take that down some more, too. That's why all that prime. So we've got, what's that? That's a low. Low. And, and, and all this, I haven't really okay, this okay, well, all this orange peely stuff is low, too, yeah. right? That's the primer. So you're, more or less, you're going to have to get in here. I, told, I, would, I wouldn't run my block like this in there. I kind of run it like yeah, back and forth like that. You got like a little low spot going on here. Mm -hmm. You got a little low spot going on here. And you want to run this off until you get it. Until it becomes smooth. And I'm going to run one off here and just show you. Jolene can do it. She knows. If she don't know, she'll learn. Just turn it around, get clean your paper. Hoping there's enough product on there. What I mean by product is primer. That's why you put a lot of product on there because um, if you do not have it on there, you can't you can't say you can work with it. That's what primer's for, is filler. I know what you're saying, boys. Get to your door and never leave her alone. But I want to do this one here just to show what's got to happen. And when I'm doing this, actually there's some coming off there now. You can see how we're losing that, mm -hmm. that stuff. As we're losing that, um, as the more product comes off, what happens? The lighter. The lighter the car becomes. And it does mean something to some. You know. This was supposed to be, or, or we're em emulating, this was supposed to be the fastest sports car in the world. Mm, yeah, the it, And it still is in some instances, is it not? It still is. I don't think you're buying Bugattis cheap today, are you? No. No cheap, no cheap Bugattis out there? Pardon? No cheap Bugattis out there? Shouldn't use the the six inch stickies for sand for like sandpaper. You just use the roll the the roll. But sometimes I like to use the stickies. They just seem to be a little bit more aggressive sometimes.
You don't have my rent to me by Friday. <laughs> Close. What's that? It seems close. What? Just everything, the body coming together, the body work. Oh, I see what you're saying. You're not sure, but it looks like it's good. <laughs> <laughs> I trust. What? I trust that it's good. There's so much small stuff that a person does not see it, but a person that's doing it like me, I, I, I know and I see lots of stuff that has to be done. I do. And um, let's face it, you're, you're, you know, you're painting a car, you want it to look as, you know, the best it can, generally. And I don't have to rush it, but if Jolene says she wants it done by Friday, There's a lot of people out there right now saying so he's not going to paint that by Friday. A lot of people out there. That could be on your side. Step away from that side for a second. That's all I'm doing. It's not finished yet. I just want to step away from it for a minute. Go back to it, I guess. Also, when I put primer on this, all it does is make it thicker again. So um, you really have to be careful when I go to do these doors that I'm not building it up too far or too low. It really can take your time trying to make the lines right, especially when you've made every line of the car, you know. And restoring a car, the lines have already been made for you, generally. You're trying to make them better, but when you're making the car, it's a lot different. Using an 80 grit, I haven't told you already, if you're just new on board, use an 80 grit, 40-80 prime. So we gotta put primer on after we sand this out. On the places that are like gray and have, have been sanded and they have no filler showing, I probably would not put a bunch of primer on that. And the reason being is it's telling me that it's, it's good. And for me to put product on where the gray is and it's been sanded and it's got nothing showing through, no filler, no metal, no nothing, seems a bit pointless. 
So I probably will stay away from that area with the primer. I'll give it a little bit because we're going to want to sand the whole thing as a as one playing field. But in all facts, I would like where where the head or the windshield wipers were deleted. I would put a good fair amount of primer on that. Uh, where the fender is showing the fiberglass and the filler and the metal, I'll probably show put a fair bit of fiberglass on that. But where the, the primer is not busted through, we'll just get a probably another coat because it's 80 grit that we sanded it with. We'll put another coat on that just so we can sand it and, and get all the 80 grit scratches out of it and bring it to one playing field. So when the car gets painted, it would be nice, you know, it'd be awesome if there's no, well there'll be no filler showing and no metal showing. And if there is, you have to cover it up and you have to wonder why. Why is there something showing there? Well, I think you can figure it out. What's that? I got all that out. Man, I'm telling you right now, you're hired. <laughs> now. I started coming through the climb a little bit. Okay, good. Good. Let's let's try to bring that down and get yeah. that out. And let's try. You're holding your block flat, are you? Yeah. You wouldn't be chiseling that off like because <laughs> you want to get it, would you? No, look. Here, I'll take a little. Start doing that on me now. I'm telling you. I love them. All right. Let's let's get all the all the center. You got a little yeah, one right there. Mm -hmm. I would use a long board on that. Try to keep taking that down, taking that down, so you get that. Once you get your camera and show what you have and what you need to get, and you can show that spot and a couple spots there. So you're going to long board that whole thing. And you're not going to really press on the board real hard, right? Jolene, you're going to let that sandpaper do its work. This is the hood, and we all know what you see first. The hood. Now Jolene is doing the hood. She got the back side all cleaned out for us. We got the back side all cleaned out. I'm saying that's good. We got nothing showing, but we got a little spot right there. And they're just a little tiny something there. So Jolene's gonna block, keep blocking the hood to get that. We have a little bit of going on up here. Look at this up here. A little, I can feel that in there, I can feel that. So we're st still gonna keep blocking the hood. We got lots of primer on there still. And we try, wanna try to run it up in far as close to that seam as we can. And, um, and then you'll have it. So. When you finish this side, I will be in love that much more. Jolene looks amazing today, sanding body fill. Looks amazing. Anytime you're helping, you're amazing. Believe me. Believe me. Sometimes fillers are to sand in certain places, and you just got to keep going, man. Just keep digging. Keep digging. Keep going. Yeah. 
inside the door, I'm not worried about if it's wavy or not, because I mean, you can, you're not gonna see anything in that little tiny spice there. I'm just worried about the gap, the line, the edge coming all the way around. I'm worried about that. And I'm worried about having pinholes or any scratches in there, because we want that painted when you open the door. It wants to look as shiny as the top. That's where I'm at. And that's what it has to be. So right now I'm worried about door gap and finish. What I mean by finish is scratches. And the only way I can tell whether the door gap is good or not is keep putting the door back on and off. And you know what that takes? Time. And Jolene ordered the straps for the hood. And you know, in all honesty, I would love to have the straps in place, screwed on, before we paint the car. That's what I'd love to have. Yeah, but I'm not sure if Jolene's allowing me that or not. And we'll talk that over. Yeah. Over sushi. We'll negotiate. We'll negotiate. You know how that goes, don't you boys? You know how that goes. Yeah. And there's, if there's any women that watch this show, um, Jolene is certainly someone to look up to, that's for sure. <laughs> Unless you're taller. But I did. When I sand that down there, I put some filler on it. Just trying to find that primered edge along that edge there. I'm just trying to find it because that is my gap, door gap. And if I don't find it, well, that means I got to keep sanding. And I found it. There it is. I'm hoping that works out for me, anyways. Hoping that works out for me.
door is going to have to go back on to make sure I got it right. That's for sure. I don't like that. Didn't like that. <laughs> Going back to our little stubby. Nope. Not yet. I know it's going to look good is try the doors back on. It would be a shame to do all that work and then not try the doors on. Have to try the doors on. Have to. I'm not going to do any more pinholing along there and the reason being is I find that you sand into your body fill again and just not, not interested in doing that. I'd rather pinhole it after it's been primed. Must have some 40 grit on this. I'm gonna take this down a little bit. Just gonna swipe over this easy. You've got, you've got some 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 bad old when I say bad old scratches. You've got some dirty. It's got some 40 grit scratches in it, and I want to take it down a little bit smoother before I prime it. And the easy grit is my choice.
ganyan ganun baby How you making it? Um, Just yeah. a reason to get up. Warm to yeah. see you. Some huh? lows going on there. And it Some lows. It feels. Okay, so you, have you hit any metal yet? No. Um, it just seems like. Can you can you run that in there, Chloe? Yeah, okay. Can you run it in there? Just, just like that. And when you get a bunch built up take your cloth and wipe it out of there so I'd, I'd go along like that and hit something first before you stop you know it'd be you know you may, like. you may as well go until you hit something I mean all them places see that place right there mm -hmm. and okay, if you want to get your with. camera and we'll explain it maybe okay. and then uh, we'll go to the other side and I'll show the finish skirt after what I'm doing Oh, you got that little little bump out, eh? A little sort yeah. of a ding in it. Good. All right, she's got the, the ding out. There's a, there was a ding here somewhere. She got it out, and it, it's a guide coat for a reason. It's a guide to let you know what's going on, what's not going on. As we look at it, we can see here. We can see there, and when we can see all the way along, there's a pick there. We can see all the way along there that there is um, a, an issue, a problem. Um, you you could paint that probably no doubt in my mind, but you probably wouldn't be happy with it after if you were looking for a, a you know a really nice job. But where we have not hit any metal here yet, we have not gone through the primer anywhere as yet. I'm thinking that we may as well keep blocking in through here. I'll just run that along through here a little bit more. Just give Jolene, Jolene a little break for a second. I'm just going to take this long block and run it in there. A little bit further so if you're not if you're not if you're not going to um, take it down far enough to hit metal there you obviously must you must know that that is a low so you would have to take and put your you'd have to take, put filler in there to make that come out where we are not hitting metal yet I'm not willing to put more filler in to get that. Also, it's just like the old thing where, you know, I was taught a long time ago when you're sanding something and if you see bare metal, well, hit it, knock it in with a hammer. That's a high spot. Hit the metal in and, and then fill it. Well, <laughs> things generally look better high than low. So, um, things look better high than low. So, you'll see a lot of people that, you know, say if you build a fender. Uh, once you build that fender and weld that fender all together, and this is an issue I have, when you weld that fender all together, where you weld it together is generally the highest place where you weld together. Then what, generally what will happen is you'll take a plenishing hammer or something to get in there and to stretch the metal to bring it high. So it's, it's, it makes it um, less filler work, but in the end, um, to start pounding if I've seen a you know a metal popping out to pound that metal in well you're putting filler in anyways so to get rid of that generally everybody's trying to bring it out higher so it looks better um, so if I hit metal here I'm not going to knock it in I'm going to prime it fill the places that are low so if I have say if I hit metal here and I still have these places I would fill these places and go over top of the metal and go right to the end I would fill that whole length and try to get it so I can get it taken out. I would not knock it in with a hammer and then put filler over top of that to try to get that. Seems pointless um, to to get something low to hammer something else in and put filler over both of them. It you know it doesn't not make a whole lot of sense. So um, generally, if you hit a high spot, you have your guide coat where your low spot is. I would stop when you hit your metal and fill your low spot. That's what I generally do. We're getting better there now.
going to tilt my block on its edge a little bit like this instead of holding it flat because we're the, obviously the hood is coming up like this so when I hold it flat we're not it's, it's kind of holding down I'm just, I just want to take this edge of the block and try to get in there against that that rib not that I'm trying to change any of the shape or not or dig at it I'm trying to hold that straight edge in there to try to get that line that's where the issue is up at the point of the hood Now there's no there's no issues down here, but if I'm going to sand this all down here, I may as well take a little bit off this to try to keep it all the same. That makes sense. I hope. Now I'm going to go the other way. Now my no, not yet. Just wondering if that was metal there. If that was metal, that means all that stuff has to be a swipe of. This hood was a flat piece of metal with a piece of round rod welded on the edge along here and a piece of round rod welded on the edge down here and then welded all the way along there and then the piece welded down the center. Can't tell if that's guide coat or metal. If the benches are rocking, I'm a sand it. Gonna flatten it out here a little bit. Because I don't want to any boo-boos going. Got a little bit of guide coat at the end there, and see. Whoever primed that hood, I'm gonna tell them one thing right now. Thank you very much for putting enough product on. Now, look, see, look, I got a little bit of metal coming. Right here where the weld is, I'm gonna leave it. And the reason being is, why would I go any further? To, to grind that off or to, you know, if I'm hitting metal right there, um, if, I, if I take it down any further, then I'm gonna have to go back above that anyway, because that's the ocean floor. So the ocean floor is telling me this. I've got metal going right there. You can see a little tiny, little tiny bit of metal there. There's no sense going any further than that. I've got fiberglass there, so we know we're right against the weld. Fiberglass there, right against the weld. I got metal showing here. I've got a low spot there, a little, a, a guide of low spot. There's guide coat in there, so it's telling me that it's low because we've been holding our, our block flat. We got a little bit going on there and a little bit low going on there. So what's going to happen is I'm going to mix up a little bit of filler. I'm going to sh I'll actually show you. Just want to tilt me. I'm going to show you. Why not? That's what we do here. Let's mix up a little bit of filler. Too much. I, I don't want to get too much. And also, you see me sanding by the hinges here, and I'm hitting the, the stainless there. Um, what's going to happen there is I'm going to end up. Um, I've scratched that stainless, I've welded that hinge on there, so it's a permanent hinge. We just take the doors off by the pin. So it basically what the door is, it's, it's set in place. I just have to pin it and it fits. But where I'm scratching that, what I'm going to do after, we'll take that off probably when we paint it, but when, after I'm painting, I'm going to put, the, I put a piece of chrome wrap on that. I'll just cut my little section, put it on there, and you would never know that that was ever hit or scratched or anything. For me not to scratch that after I've welded it and done all that to it, um, it was kind of hard to do. Just a little bit more, just a little bit more. So I'm going to put a piece of chrome wrap on top of the hinge. If you see me hitting that and you think, wow, he's got that all scratched up. Yes, I do, but I'm going to fix it in the end. I cut myself a little squeegee. 
make a small one. I'm not going to have to use all that, but I'm not going to do just the places that have low spot in. I'm not going to do that. And the reason being is I find that if you're if you're doing putting just filler um, in one spot and you have something beside it, just means you have to go back and and um, fix another spot. So generally, what I like to do where it's in that seam, a little pick, little pick there, there was where it's in that seam, we'll do the whole thing. We're not going to put a whole bunch in there, no just a little bit and then we can rub our finger down through there and get that seam we'll do it again try to get the filler up where it needs to be spot that's not doing so well. I don't need a bunch right there. I need some right there. So now that's what I'm going to do there like that. I would do the whole thing. Then when we go to sand that, we can sand the whole thing together as one playing field and to what, give a little swipe there, a little swipe there, a little swipe there, a little swipe there. Then you get sand in it, get digging it here. Oh, we took it down a little far. Get sand there, digging it down there a little bit. You might as well do the whole thing and swipe it all off as one playing field. It just makes it easier um, than trying to, it's just exactly the same as having a dent there, a dent there, and a dent there. I would, I would never come along and go choom, choom, and do that and have three places. Put some body fill on there, put some body fill on there, put some body fill in there, and then bring it all as one. Because you're going to be swiping the block there anyways. You might as well be sanding one area as you're trying to be sand three areas. This is an issue a lot of people have is you get into sanding an area, then you affect the area beside it and behind it and over there and around there. If you try to make it one area, and then you're better off. You, you won't affect anything. Um, to, like I said, if there's a, a pick, you know, if you have a bunch of a body fill and you have a pick there and a pick there and a pick there, to come in there and swipe that little pick and swipe that little pick and swipe that little pick before you prime over your body fill, when you sand that, you're going to make your body fill wavy again. So generally, that's, this is what I like to do. I like to, if I have a pick or a pinhole, I like to prime it. If it's straight, mind you, if it's straight, I like to prime it and then hit that pick afterwards because I have that shell of the primer um, to stop me from, from, from affecting the body fill that I have on the car. So I, I hope that makes sense. So when you're doing something, uh, when you're filling something, we'll come over here on the fender skirt maybe and just take a look. Just little secrets. Um, I take my block over there and I put it. Where did I put it? So I'm doing my, doing the fender skirt right now. And the reason I'm sanding over here with an 80 grit, you can see that there's terrible scratches in there right now. Terrible, terrible scratches. And I'm trying to get it out before I prime. You can see how well an 80 grit Body, hitting metal there so I really I really I'm hoping that I can get enough primer on this 
to get it up so I don't have to hit that no more. I don't want to put any more filler on it if I don't have to. That's what, that's what I'm hoping. 40 grit scratches, and this is 80 grit scratches. That right there is why I don't mind priming 80 grit scratches, because that's what it looks like. I do not mind priming that. I got a scratch there. I can keep going. Yes, I can. And probably get it out. But that's why I say 40, 80 prime. And I find that the force of the paper, the straighter the product. And the product is the car. I'd like to get it down to that fender skirt. It'd make me happy. Then I can stand the fender skirt at the same time, then I know they fit good. See the 40 grit scratches in the primer? See that? Can you see it? Mm -hmm. Get up, Jay. Get up. Reason I cross my paper because it, the, the cutting across the grain makes it sand better, quicker. like that metal there, but it's a high spot, or rather high than low. No more scratches with that 80 grit, so 80 grit to me is is fine to prime. What happens is I find if you took a piece of uh, 220 or anything, you know, 220, it just it all it does is more or less polish that filler and it makes it not straight again. It just I don't find it does a good job. It polishes it, which we're not into polishing. We want to make it straight. Obviously, you have to get down into the 220 and the 400 to, to paint something, but when you're first time priming, um, I would never go anything finer than an any grit. We have a spot down here. When I took the fender skirt off, it pulled the filler off that was around the edge of the, of the fender to the fender skirt. Now, when I filled that, put a little fill back on that, I want... No, I want no no filler on top of the fender skirt because if I have if I have to put fill if filler hits the fender skirt, that means I'm back into sanding on that fender skirt, and then then that means you affect what's going on there. There's filler there. Then you would sand the filler that's around that filler that you're trying to sand off, and it causes an issue. So what a smart thing to do, just put a little tape on it. it only takes a minute. Put a little tape on it. That way there I'm not affecting it. Once I get it where I need to have it, then I'll take the tape off and block it together. This is an 80 grit, sanding that fill just fine. I do not use putties because I find that the putties and the, and the fillers are two different strengths.
hardness. And when you get two different hardnesses going together, that's when you get become have an issue. Now we're getting to take a little bit of filler out of the fender skirt to make it fit the fender, which is a okay with me. Okay, okay with me. Every time you can take something out, it's okay with me. You want to try to get the shape that you're sanding. If I take that block and shove it in there, I'm just going to get a groove. You know what I'm trying to say. I'm going to get a groove on the edge of the block. If I start taking that, take it in there like that now that it's sanded off. But if I try to block that off in there without having a round edge or trying to sand it in there, yeah, take the sand the bottom of it off. Getting your lines can be half the issue sometimes. And like Jimbo said, the lines matter. Good. Got my piece back in there. In order to get something to feel right, it must be blocked together, generally. I have to cut my line. In, in that, make that a little better. And what I'll do is I'll maybe draw it on with a pencil or a, or not, not probably not a marker, but draw it on there so it fits that fender skirt good. And when I pull the fender skirt off, then I can sand it to the mark, and then I know it fits. Better. The issue with the fender skirts, every time you put them on, you could put them on in a different place, <laughs> a different fitment, because there is a little bit of fitment there. Um, you can put them on in a different place, which makes it a different fit each time. So that's the issue with doing the fender skirts off and on, off and on. They don't fit exactly the same place every time. There's a little bit of a play there, so you really have to try to get it right in place. And you can make a couple lines on the body to make sure it's in the right place. We've got 40 grit over here. This is a piece of worn out 80 grit, so you can see the scratches in the fender. 
see all the scratches in the fender. I'm going to clean the spots again, get any fat air out of the way. Forty eighty prime, so once I block this out and get the scratches out of it with the eighty grit, he's ready for primer. And Jolene says it's fast with a two twenty and four hundred, so man, I'm counting on you, baby. <laughs> I'm counting on you. This car is a, a desired taste. Not everybody likes this car. I guess everybody probably likes the price that they are worth. You know, everybody likes that about them, but I'm not, this is an acquired taste. But what I, what I am going to say is once the, the rivets go in, it brings it that much further for me, for the, how much I like it. It just shows more art of the car when the rivets are in. Where it's got no rivets in it, it's just got all the holes in it. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's cool. But when the rivets get in it, that's when it really comes around, comes to life for me as a car. Okay. And back in the day, um, it, it wasn't an art car. It was the fastest car in the world. It was not an art car. And that's probably the reason why it was built the way it was. The shape, the style, um, the height, the bigness. It's not built for a big man. And this one ain't built for me, and this is built for my queen, Jolene. Now, as I sand that, I'm going to take some more out of that, I guess. What's the time at? We're good. So that's what I'm doing today is sanding and trying to make everything fit. Jolene did a beautiful job on the hood. Uh, we'll wait for a bit before um, we sand the, the filler down the edge of the spine of the hood. Wait for a bit till it gets nice and hard. And the reason I say I want it to get nice and hard because then it sands equally. When I sand it, when it's soft, I feel like I have it's easy to get an issue when it becomes fully fully cured is when I want to sand it. I do not want to sand it what's soft. I do not want to sand it what's soft. So the only way I'm going to know them door gaps are where I need them to be is to have the door sanded, have the primer around here, and have this sanded. That's the only way I'm going to know. If I go and paint the door prime this, sand it, paint it. I am not going to know whether the gap is right. I'm going to have to prime this, sand the door, sand the inside of the door, put the door back on, and then I will know. If I get premature and paint, start painting this thing when, when I'm told, we're hoping for a good door gap. Because we had good door gap before, but I've piled the primer on the doors, and I will probably put three or four good coats of primer on the inside here to make sure that we get all the scratches. And the reason being is, you can see on the hood, Jolene was able to get out the back where it didn't look good. She was able to get out that little spot in the middle of the hood, a little dang there. 90% um, of it she was able to get out because the product was there. That's why, um, that's why the product's put on there, so you're able to get that stuff. Because if you want to, um, you know, sand your car um, until the body feels perfect and you putty it and then you put the putty on it so it's perfect. Um, you're gonna, it takes a long time to do that. And sometimes the easier way to do it is sometimes to pile the product on like the primer and to get it on there so you have something to work with because the primer is only gonna stay where it's needed. Um, you don't need it if you don't need it. It's just gonna stay where you need it. 
All right, everybody, thanks for coming back. We appreciate it. I know that it's hard to watch me and Jolene sand, but we only show what we're doing. And uh, that's what we're doing. We're trying to sand the car. She wants me to get some paint on it, get it rock and roll. We want, she wants to get back on, do some fabricating. And um, I, I would like to get on some fabricating too. It's hard to get me motivated to sand this car. It really is it's because it's body filled, called body work. And if you watch any of the car shows on TV or if you anywhere, nobody wants to sit and watch somebody sand body fill in the cars. 90% um, of the, the work that you see is fabrication, metal work, how you're making things, that sort of stuff. But in all honesty, if it wasn't for the body men of the world that are into these cars, probably most cars would look like poop. <laughs> it really does matter. The body man is one of the most important people of the car world. And the reason being is whether the metal works fantastic, whether the metal work is not fantastic, whether it's just okay or whatever. The body man is always the guy that makes it look right. Even the painter will tell you. He can put on a beautiful coat of paint, but in the end, if the body job is not good, it doesn't look that good. And there's nobody, like I said before, there's nobody welding cars and then painting them bare metal and not blocking them out and, and filling them in sand to make them look good. So the body man is the unsung hero of body work. And that's what we call it, body work. That's why I, I enjoy, I like the metal fabrication, but basically I am doing body work. I'm metal fabbing it, then I'm body filling it, then I'm priming it, and then I'm painting it. And the most important part to have a nice job is that body work to make everything look good. All right, everybody, if you like, throw a like out. And if you want like, you might as well share. And if you're going to share, you might as well get someone to subscribe. And if you're just new here, tell your friends. We're just building cars, sand, and primer just like everybody else. We are no bigger, no smaller. And we want to thank you for coming back. And we'll be here tomorrow.